Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News First at 4. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney has the night off. We start with a look at the forecast because after some morning rain, the sunshine returned today and we are expecting a dangerous heat wave next week. We could see temperatures in the triple digits for the first time this year. Let's start, start by handing things right over to meteorologist Michelle Boss for more on the hot weather heading our way. Michelle? Yeah, so we've already seen temperatures in the 90s uh, four other days, but it hasn't been consistently hot day after day. We've just kind of had a day in the 90s, and then it cools off, day in the 90s, and it cools off. But this next week is going to be different, where we're going to warm up into the 90s plus, and we're going to stay there for an extended period of time. So taking a look at the temperature trend, this weekend not too bad. In fact, uh, Saturday will probably be the coolest day of the entire period, but we're going to get back into the 90s on Sunday and you can see temperatures just keep ramping right up until we get to near the triple digits there towards the end of next week. Specifically for this weekend, though, uh, great weather uh, for, for summertime activities, especially if you can be near water. 87, mostly sunny on Saturday, 90 and sunny skies on Sunday out there right now. Not as hot as it was yesterday. We're running about 6 to 7 degrees cooler than this time yesterday, sitting at 85 in Spokane, 84 in Coeur d'Alene, and into the lower and mid-90s across central Washington, even Lewiston, only in the lower 90s at the four clock hour on satellite and radar in the first couple of frames. You can catch a few of those isolated thunderstorms that rolled through earlier this morning. Officially did not record any precipitation at the airport, uh, but out to even here on the South Hill and out in the Spokane Valley in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, certainly saw some raindrops just briefly this morning and a couple of claps of thunder. You can see things have cleared out and quiet weather expected for the rest of the evening. So here's your short term forecast. Sunny skies for the evening temperatures in the mid 80s by 8 o'clock and looking at clear skies tonight. Overnight lows once again cooling down into the upper 50s and lower 60s. All right, Michelle, sounds good. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. And with the hot weather heading our way, we're going to give you some tips on how to keep cooling costs down this summer. One way you can cut down on your cooling bill is by avoiding placing lamps or TVs near your air conditioning thermostat. It'll sense the heat from the appliances and cause the AC to run longer than necessary. And turn off ceiling fans when you leave the room. Fans cool people, not necessarily rooms. You can also seal off doors and windows with caulking or weather stripping. A few ideas there. In the meantime, there is still a high demand for AC units all across the state as dangerous heat levels threaten parts of the state. So if your AC unit is looking old and spent, experts say you may want to upgrade this summer because supply chain issues could cause delays. HVAC businesses in the state are fully booked, something companies across western Washington are experiencing ever since temperatures broke records last summer. But this summer, Inflation is now part of the equation. Prices have been raised on everything, so not even for just customers in general, but also for us. A new HVAC installation could range from ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending on the home's needs. So experts recommend to book now to reserve a spot because once it gets really hot, there might not be any slots available. And looking ahead to next week, the city of Spokane is expected to announce its plans for cooling centers across the city coming up on Tuesday. Last year, 20 people in Spokane died during an unprecedented heat wave. The city council then enacted new guidelines for cooling centers. Cooling centers are air conditioned public places designed to protect vulnerable people during extreme heat. And now city code requires cooling centers to be open when the temperature is forecasted to be more than 95 degrees for two days in a row or more. On those days, the cooling centers will remain open as long as the temperatures remain at or above 95. So on Tuesday, we will learn more about where those centers will be opened as the forecast is calling for a stretch of days above 95 degrees. Well, two fire pilots on board a helicopter that crashed on Thursday afternoon in the Salmon River died today, and we now know that one of them was from Post Falls. Both fire pilots were helping fight the Moose Fire. According to the Lemmy County Sheriff Steve Penner, the pilots were highly experienced and both were veterans. Idaho Governor Brad Little has ordered U.S. and state flags to be flown at half staff in honor of the two pilots. Well, local leaders are waiting to hear if the state will approve a nearly $25 million plan to tackle the homelessness crisis in Spokane. The plan includes new ideas such as turning a motel into a shelter and placing tiny home pods in the East Trent Shelter Building. Krem 2's Janelle Finch asked people experiencing homelessness about this new approach. Janelle? A stable living environment, a place to call their own, and a stepping stone to get back on their feet. This is what the people I spoke to at the homeless encampment off of I-90 told me they want out of shelters. They say if a shelter provided private spaces like hotel rooms or tiny homes, they would be more willing to move off the state-owned land. And those are the exact spaces local leaders are planning to create. 
Spokane County leaders are proposing 62 person pods in the East Trent shelter. That would be in addition to 120 beds, which could house up to 240 people. For people living out of their RVs, there's also potential for rental assistance on RV campgrounds. Campgrounds. Another option would be for Catholic charities to purchase the Quality Inn on Sunset Highway and turn it into a shelter. People at the homeless encampment say they would consider living in an apartment style shelter over the state owned land near I 90. Well, hotel, you got direct bathroom. You got, you can take a shower, you can take a bath. Um, you got electricity. Um, you, you got heat. You know what I'm saying? Um, how you just, out here, it's just like you camping. You out here, you surviving out here. The building could have space for 110 people within 90 days of funding. The hotel also has the potential to become permanent housing. At last count, almost 600 people were living in the homeless encampment. According to the city, a deadline has not been established for reviewing or approving the plan. But if the county gets the funding, action would be expected by August. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Crem2 News. All right, Janelle, thank you very much. In the meantime, applications open today for a new program that will help people experiencing homelessness reconnect with their family. It's called the Homeward Bound Project. The program helps people experiencing homelessness relocate to be with family or services outside of Spokane County. It's an idea that has had some success in western Washington. Volunteers of America runs the programs, and as part of the application process, the group will verify that family and caretakers in the new city are actually there before giving money for transportation. Well, in other news, the woman suspected of shooting and killing her ex-boyfriend earlier this month had reportedly had a friend drive her to his home before shooting him. That's according to court documents. 32-year-old Stacy Gerber was arrested last night on charges of second-degree murder in the death of Michael Materni. Materni was shot and killed near North Belt Street and West Everett Avenue. She reportedly turned herself in to police. Well, dozens of volunteers came downtown to help clean up graffiti today. This is the second time in two months the city organized a community cleanup. A volunteer cleanup crew went to six different locations from downtown Spokane to High Bridge Park to paint over structures that were filled with graffiti. Graffiti in Spokane has progressed over the pandemic and Spokane code enforcement has been aggressive in erasing that graffiti over the past six months. And they hope to use volunteer crews every couple of months, they say. I think it's a sense of community that uh, that we get from these types of events. So it's an opportunity for the public to get involved with their municipality, uh, get out and outside in the beautiful weather and do some good while they're at it. Garcia says this is just one part of the mayor's initiative to clean up Spokane. The city says code enforcement crews clean up graffiti every week, but the volunteers help them to keep up with it all. The city hopes these cleanups will discourage more graffiti from happening. An update now on the reopening of the Mullen Road Bridge in Spokane Valley. Previously, that bridge was scheduled to be fully reopened by today. However, WashDOT tweeted earlier today that they would not be opening it, citing that because of the rain this morning, it put the bridge deck seal rather in jeopardy. WashDOT uh, says they pushed some of the work in possible reopening to Monday now. Crews have been working on repairing the bridge ever since May. Well, Spokane shot gear, trophies, and other equipment was auctioned off today in downtown Spokane. In February, our Creme 2 investiga investigative team was the first to report the Shocks owner, Sam Adams, failed to pay his deposit to play its upcoming season at the Spokane Arena. The Shocks contract was then terminated, and the team was kicked out of the Indoor Football League. Creme 2 News senior photojournalist Brett Alberry spoke with fans and people in the community as they showed up to buy abandoned items. Maybe 75 then. 75 there now, 85, this is and 100. Uh, big Shock fans, been there since day one. I mean, grew up going to the games, season tickets all the time. Sold us 110, number 163. Ended up becoming a season ticket holder for years. Pretty bummed they're gone now, actually. Unbelievable. Yeah. Just surprising to see it all just go like that. It's frustrating. It's frustrating because we're... 175 here. We're such a big sports-minded town, Spokane, Coeur d'Alene area. And, you know, arena football, it works here. We, there's proof of that. Where's $50 on it? This one I got for 30 and then we got this one for 130 The goal is to find a bargain to get some football equipment that we need. Northwest Christian, as we're looking for gear, we have helmets that are coming up for expiration, and we're a white-on-white -white scheme, and I'm too vain of a person to get colors that don't match, so it ended up being a great fit for us to find these white-on-white -white helmets. Last call. I called up my buddy who was coming with me to games. I called up my parents, and I mean, I had a list of stuff I had to get for family, friends. Part of it was bittersweet. Part of it is, you know, here's this franchise that, you know, for 10 plus years, we were even even when they were the empire, you know, it's 
it, it's tough to see some of this stuff going for 25, 30 bucks. I mean, I'm excited. I got some jerseys for 30 bucks, but yeah. you know, 30 bucks for a game used jersey, that's so low, so cheap, and it's kind of sad. Maybe 25 now, 150. It's bittersweet, but also hopefully we can get somebody, hopefully we can get somebody back who knows what they're doing when running a team and keep it around for a lot longer.